Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, the one surprising emotion that makes a man respect you. One surprising emotion. <laughs> All right, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. I usually shoot about three or four videos per week for your enjoyment pleasure. Okay, our topic, the one surprising emotion that makes a man respect you. So, that's interesting. Um, I once heard a relationship uh, therapist who's in her 80s plus uh, say that uh, a man, a woman feels respected when she's cherished and a man feels cherished when he's respected. And I've been thinking about this for a long time and I'm here to say, ugh, how about when I'm respected, I feel respected and when I'm cherished, I feel cherished. How about that? How about we take those two and don't put them together, let's keep them separate. Because respect is, is, is basically when we respect another human being, we're saying, you are important to me. You are important to me. And at least from my perspective, and it says that I actually value you. This is in romantic relationship, okay? So when you respect someone, you're saying you're important to them and they, they value you and they actually, you know, because think about respect. You know, what's the opposite of respect is disrespect. Disrespect is saying I don't value you and disrespect is saying you're not important to me. So what's it take to get a man to respect you? What's it take to get a man to respect you? Now, I like the way Brene Brown talks about something that I think is hugely important. And I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna get to the one surprising emotion a little bit further along, but I wanna talk about Brene Brown for a moment. If you're not familiar with her work, please Google her work. She talks about boundaries. It's one of her, her signature areas that she talks about. In fact, she has an amazing book called Daring Greatly, Daring Greatly. And if you haven't received, check, that, check it out. By the way, there's a link to all my recommended books below. If you've read this book or you've checked out Brene Brown's work, please post a comment below. Let me know what you think of her work. But the title of her book is How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Love, Parent, and Lead. How the Courage of Being Vulnerable. So a boundary is basically saying what's okay and not okay for me. What's okay and not okay for me. Now, you might be thinking, well, Jonathan, is, the, is, is a boundary the one surprising emotion that makes a man respect you? Well, uh, yes, absolutely. Boundaries do that, but it's how you deliver your boundary that makes the difference. And that's what I want to lean in today is how you deliver your boundary. And while I, you know, if you've read my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? And if you haven't, please check it out by Jonathan Asley. My first chapter is speak your truth, do it with kindness. Speak your truth, do it with kindness. So a boundary is best to be delivered because it is your truth. A boundary is what's okay and what's not okay for you. Another way of looking at a boundary is your standard is do it in a kind way. But I also want you to begin to apply something new. And this is the surprising emotion I want you to adopt, and that's firmness, firmness, firmness. In other words, firmness basically means is this is important to me. This is important to me. And when you treat something important for yourself, and that's what firmness is, then a person can either choose to accept it or reject it, but if they accept it, it's probably because they respect you, and if they reject it, it's because they disrespect you. Now, I'm not here to suggest firmness in a confrontational way, okay, or in some sort of, of controlling way. I'm talking about saying it from a place of empowerment. I'm firm about this, and I wanna give you two examples. One is from my own personal experience. I, I, I dated a woman years ago, this was a decade ago, where we began dating and um, our, you know, the first, our first night that we slept together, the next morning she said something to me and she said, look, I need to share something with you, Jonathan. You snore and you snore badly. You snore and you snore badly. By the way, ladies, if you've ever dated a man who snored, please post a comment below. <laughs> um, 
But she said it and she's basically said, look, I'm gonna, if we're gonna be in relationship together, I need rest, I need eight hours of sleep every day and I couldn't sleep with you last night. And if this persists, then this relationship isn't gonna work. Now she said it not in a confrontational tone, but she said it with a level of firmness. This is a boundary for me. And I need this if you want this relationship to continue. So you know what I did is I Googled at that time how to cure snoring. I found out that you can actually get something called a snore guard. A snore guard, this is mine inside. It's too grody to show you. <laughs> But um, what I found was a dentist can preform a, a guard for your mouth, which actually raises your chin or moves your chin a little bit, so it allows airway to come through. Lo and behold, I you know it took about two weeks to get, and we met, I told her what I was doing. We navigated it, um, and eventually, when I got it, the snoring almost went away. I mean, it went from like all night long to late, just five minutes in a night. Okay, now she delivered it from a place of this is important to me. She was firm. And I said, you know what, because I wanted, I want to be with this woman, I was open to uh, accommodating her. It's because I respected her. I respected the way she shared it with me. And I want to share you another story of a client of mine who's in a two year relationship. And there happens to be an issue in his home where there's a lot of clutter. And in her life, when there's clutter, she doesn't feel safe. I mean, clutter to her, she's not obsessive compulsive or anything, but clutter doesn't feel safe for her. And he's kind of open to having a messy desk and things like that. And, uh, and there's an office that he wants to, con says that she can use for her professional life because she works from home now because of COVID and everything. But she's like, look, I don't feel safe in this office. And this is really important to me. And she said it firmly. In other words, this is important to me. And because he genuinely cares about her, because he genuinely respects her, and he respects her because she didn't do it all passively. She didn't do it at all in leaning back feminine energy. She was being solid in her empowerment. In fact, ladies, I'm a big proponent. Be solid in your empowerment. Dare greatly. Don't lean back. Don't be in your feminine energy, be in your empowered energy because that's how we choose to respect another human being. <sighs> yeah. Now listen, this might turn off some men. Yeah, being firm is gonna turn off guys. It's gonna turn off the guy who's genuinely not that into you or doesn't respect you. And believe me, plenty of men treat you ladies like low hanging fruit. And I'm here to say, when you step into your empowerment, when you step into your self-love, you become the top of the tree in your life. And when you're the top of the tree of your life, when you're firm by saying what's important to me, you can express it in a kind, loving way. That's okay. And we're gonna respect you for it because if we genuinely care about you, we wanna make you happy. And it demonstrates that we respect you as well. Hmm. Now, I'm sure you have some thoughts about this. You might even have some questions. Please post a comment below. I read all the questions, or at least I do my best, of, and, and I try to respond to several of them. Also, if you've been feeling like this resonates with you, if this content resonates with you and you've been thinking about hiring a coach, check out my free discovery call to see if working, you can call with me, but to see if working with a coach is right for you. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to somebody and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thank you so much and wishing you a super duper wonderful day. Bye-bye now.